All right, Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 7, Iron Fist Kettle. All right, this episode adapts Chapter 66 and 67 of the manga, and I just did a quick flip through, and pretty much it's done panel by panel. It's pretty much exact uh, to the manga itself, other than just a little bit of changes here and there, um, and especially at the end, which I, I'll go into that in a second here. But this episode was very important to show us a little bit more of who Kettle is on the farm, because in the anime... We haven't really gotten to know him, and so far, he seems like a pretty chill, pretty good dude. Like, if you if you had to be a slave for somebody, there's probably a lot worse people out there you could be a slave for, right? Kaido seems like a pretty genuine person when he brought Einar onto the farm. He said, all right, once you guys cultivate this land, you chop the trees down, you grow the wheat, basically you'll sell it back to me, and then I will give you your freedom. So, and he pretty much lets them have free reign amongst the farm. Of course, they do still get treated like slaves in the extent that they're very malnourished, they're worked to the bone, they have to do they have to be polite to everybody, they have to say yes sir, no sir. You know, this the farm hands get to give them shit and there's nothing that they can do about it. And of course, if somebody on the farm who technically owns them in Kettle's family wanted to kill them, well, their property so they could be killed. So, not the best but maybe not the worst place to live either if you have to be a slave. Uh, but so far, we haven't really seen a lot about, about Kettle himself because it's been focused on Thorfinn and his current state of mind and how he's so broken and depressed and he's kind of like forced to go through the motions and his friendship with Einar, which is kind of opening him up a little bit or at least getting him a little bit more uh, um, kind of inquisitive about the process of farming and growing wheat because he's so used to destruction that he's not used to creation. And then even seeing the wheat starting to grow out of the ground and seeing how feeble and weak it looks, Thorfinn is like, is this... The way that it's supposed to be because you have to be gentle you have to be a caretaker you have to be nurturing i mean i know we're dealing with plants here but stay with me it's a metaphor it's something that thorfinn is not used to whatsoever so seeing something so fragile so delicate that can turn into something very plentiful that people use to subsist and survive that can help a lot of people it's a long grueling process it's a lot more than just kind of coming in and destroying and so I love the friendship between him and Einar that they continue to build up. I love Einar praying to the god for a good season for the wheat to grow. And Thorfinn's like, pray, pray to who? And Einar's like, it doesn't matter, just pray. <laughs> you know, just saying like, I hope you just put good positive vibes, positive energy out into the universe, you know? Uh, also, I think the there were a few fans that were kind of complaining about Einar's uh, characterization so far in the anime. And once again, the anime is going to be different than the manga. So, you know, don't expect it to be a 100% perfect adaptation. They got to take liberties. At the end of the day, it's an adaptation. It's not uh, just mirroring what the, what the manga is. But I think in the last episode and this one in particular too, I think they are giving you the Einar that people wanted. The kind of little bit of silly, a little bit goofy, very optimistic, very forward thinking, uh, very practical, you know, uh, well-mannered guy that he is. He's a good man. And I love that in the beginning of the episode when he talks to Arneed and, you know, he's got a giant crush on her, you know, he's simping over and everything. And she gives him a compliment. She says that he's a good man. And that, it, like, is enough to make him happy all day long. He skips away. And it just made me think, that's how it is, man. You give us you give us guys one compliment, and we'll ride that compliment for months, man. Like, it, <laughs> it's just the way that it is. Uh, but that was just the very beginning of the episode. Then we transfer and see the arrival of another character, Torgil. And Torgil is the character that I've been waiting to see. Uh, I hate this man. I, I despise him. <laughs> I wish plagues upon his houses, but at the same time, I'm super stoked that he's uh, able to be in the series finally because he is going to shake things up in a big way. He is Kettle's son, and he has just been off to war, and you can tell this man is big, he's huge, he's muscular, he's got a sword, he's got scars on his face, and he talks a lot of shit. You know, can he back his shit up? Well, I'm not going to spoil anything. And it shows the major difference between... Torgil and Olmar, because they are brothers. Olmar has stayed on the farm. He's also a bit younger. And uh, Torgil has been out there kind of doing his thing, being involved in battle and combat. And so when he comes back, you know, he's got the war stories and Olmar is sort of like in, 
uh, in awe of this, but at the same time, he's like boasting himself up, like, yeah, I could do it too. I could come with you. Like, we could go to the next, uh, you know, bit of combat that needs to happen. We could go together. I could show my skills. You know, he's kind of talking himself up. And then when Thorgil gives him the, the necklace that he made of severed ears, well, it's a, a little bit disturbing. I'm just glad they were severed ears and not severed balls. The episode is titled Iron Fist Kettle, and it comes from this reputation of Kettle himself that when he was in war back in the day and his weapons would break or he would lose his weapons, he would just use his bare fist and just beat people down. And he has this reputation for being this great warrior, you know, somebody that has uh, experienced a lot in his past, but now in the present time, he's kind of laid back, he's kind of chill, he started this farm life. So you're thinking maybe he's kind of somebody like Thor's. You know, maybe he's somebody with a, a, a big past of violence that has chose, chosen to renounce it, that has preferred the family life, that has preferred, you know, growing, creating, preserving life as opposed to destroying it. Uh, but what you find out in this episode is it's pretty much all a big lie. It's a big boast. It is something that he has created a persona for himself to gain the respect of the people around him, which is not true because Kato himself is... <sighs> Well, I don't want to say he's a pansy, but he is a weak man. He's very fragile. He falls apart very easily, and he can't even stomach the thought of actual violence. When he sees his son come back, he can't even believe that it's his son. And when the big dramatic moment of the episode happens, where we have two children that have been stealing from the farm, uh, it is Snake, Snake the character, and his men. It is their job to be the bodyguards of the farm, to find people that are thieves, to keep people off the property, to do their job, and they do their job very well, and they found the thieves, which are these two children. Now, uh, why were they stealing? Because their father is gone. He left. Uh, and has not come back. It, he possibly could have died, possibly could have abandoned them, something else could have happened, who knows. So you have these two kids that have a sick mother that don't have anybody uh, as like the strong predominant, you know, provider force in their lives. So they've resorted to stealing. So you can understand the reason why they're doing it, uh, even if stealing is wrong, and plus they're children. You know, they're, uh, the older brother is 12. So there's a lot of precedents to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're children, they make mistakes, they don't have a father figure, they need to provide it for their family. There's a lot going on here. And Keitel sees this, and he's trying to come up with any uh, excuse he can to not really have to give them a punishment. But at the same time, the way that he's looked upon by people matters so much to him. He is Iron Fist Kettle. And Iron Fist Kettle would not allow this disrespect to happen without issuing some form of punishment. And you have all of these different voices kind of like talking to him and giving him ideas like Snake is there and Snake is saying, well, we caught them. What is the punishment? And you have Torgil there that's like, we know the punishment for stealing is cutting off arms, cut off their fucking arm. And then you have uh, Patar there that's like, well, listen, he's 12, so he's getting older. We could probably use him on the farm in some way. His father owes us a debt, so we could kind of... It, we can't, you know, harm him to the point where he can't work because we might be able to use him. So maybe just a, a light beating, you know, would help. And he said, and I believe he's saying that to help benefit Kettle so that Kettle doesn't have to say it himself. Because uh, Kettle is in this predicament where he is the leader, right? He's basically, if you look at it, you know, I, I don't know exactly how people that own big patches of land and farms like this were uh, looked upon in that time period, in that area of the world, uh, my history knowledge isn't the best, but if you relate it to maybe like American slavery in some way, the people that owned these plantations were basically like the kings of their land. Like they ran everything. They had people looking up to them. They had people asking them questions all day long. Like they basically were rulers of their own little kingdom, right? And so, you know, Kettle is responsible for not just providing and not just like giving work and not just like having the land to cultivate, but he's also uh, responsible for being the disciplinarian. Like he's also the, the person that's supposed to be, if somebody does something disrespectful like this or wrong or steals or does something on his property that you're not supposed to do, he has to issue some kind of punishment as incentive for other people to not do it. But you have this gen gentle... I don't even say gentle. You just have this guy that's just kind of terrified of 
darkness and violence that has created this reputation that people think of uh, that he's not really. So he's trying to preserve his persona while at the same time look like a leader, while at the same time not hurt these children. And he's just in this situation that like there's no way out of. So I think Patar uh, did what he did so that Ketzel didn't have to be the guy to say, let's let's beat them, you know? And then after uh, Patar suggested it, Ketzel says, okay, we'll go with that. And then uh, Torgil goes up to do it, and Torgil just doesn't give a shit. Like, this man will beat children with a smile on his face. He smacks the kid once and, like, I, dude, damn near, like, breaks him in half. Like, it, And he needs, like, 19 more uh more swings of the stick because he told uh he told them that it would be 10 lashes a piece but the older brother said he wanted to take on his sister's lashes himself so that she didn't get hurt at all and it's 20 okay uh and torgil if torgil hit this kid 20 times i have no doubt he would be dead so in order to stop this kettle decides to do it himself he grabs the stick and he performs the punishment, which I thought was a very creative artistic choice, both in the manga and in the anime, that we don't see Kettle hitting the child. And instead, we only see Kettle's reaction to it afterwards. Because uh, afterwards, Kettle is in the lap of Arnid, the slave, crying and saying that he can't handle violence, he can't handle war, that he doesn't recognize his son, and he's basically confiding in her and crying to her. And you kind of understand in a way and and uh this it goes into so so many like deep different things if you really think about it because on the one hand uh maybe fellas you can relate that feeling of being able to kind of open up and be vulnerable to like that nurturing feminine side you know what i mean like that's uh another reason why i think kettle is opening up to her is because like he's like sitting in her lap she's this young beautiful girl and he can kind of confide in her uh and, and say, like, I can say to you what I can't say to anybody else. And it's just that that feeling of being able to release, to let go, where he has to present himself as the strong leader. He has to present himself as this person with this dark past. And that's the persona he puts on every single day out in the out and about, out in the world. And then when he's behind closed doors, he just lets it all release and he confides in her and he just wants to be held, you know, like a baby and, and just kind of comforted. And uh, it's really kind of messed up if you think about it. Uh, but it's it's totally understandable in many ways. But then you also have to look on it at, and on the flip side because our need is a slave, okay? And were it her choice, she wouldn't be here comforting Kettle, okay? So you look at Kettle as maybe just a, a poor guy with a poor lot in life that's in a poor situation, which all of that is true. But then you also have to think about it in the fact that Kaito is forcing this young woman to basically be his crutch and nurture him and make him confide in her. And the, ma the, the, uh, the anime had her fully clothed, but in the manga, she's naked, which to me implies that he also probably just had sex with her. So Ketzel is... Uh, a guy that is v feeling very weak and vulnerable inside and needs somebody con to confine to, but the person he's confiding to, he is literally forcing to do that, to forcing her to be there, forcing her to be that person. And uh, it's it's just really it's really messed up when you think about it. So it, it's kind of showing the dark side of Kettle's weakness in a way, where you kind of have sympathy for him a bit, but because he has to live in this persona. Uh, he has to release in some way afterwards in doing that by forcing somebody. I mean, you think he's very good to all of his slaves, and I'm sure he is good to our need in some ways, but also, and of course, obviously more stuff that you're going to find out about, about uh, our need as time goes on. Uh, that's not the way. It's not the way. And uh, it is really, it is really, really dark. Really, really dark, really messed up, really pathetic sad when you think about it uh you can understand it but it's uh it's really messed up dude and so that's pretty much this episode so we have the new character torgil that has shown up on the land uh not a lot with thorfinn and einar this episode but they're still working they're still doing their thing i will say that i think next week's episode is going to be major 
uh, if they get, I don't know how far they're going to get, but like looking at the manga, uh, if they get to one of the scenes uh, that is coming up, I know they're getting to one because there was a preview that showed uh, the beach. So I'm looking forward to that. But then the moments that happen after that are very, very special, very important to the story. So I, I'm excited to see how the anime interprets them, especially with music and voice acting and everything that you get in the anime that you don't get in the manga. I'm really, really excited to see. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Are you excited for next week's? If you're anime only, let me know your thoughts and theories about what you think is going to happen next. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Please like it and comment if you enjoyed it to help it in the algorithm. Also, check the links below for my Patreon and channel memberships that you can join, as well as a merch store and social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you next time.